I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We're here for a special exclusive conversation with David Tajiria, the CEO of Mongo, MongoDB, a well-established leading platform. It's been around for, I mean, decades. So continues to become the platform of choice for high performance data. This modern data stack that's emerging, a big part of the story here at AWS reInvent 2022, on top of an already performant AWS cloud with you know, chips and silicon specialized instances. The world's going to be getting faster, smaller, higher performance, lower cost, specialized. Dave, thanks for taking the time for, with me today. John, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Do you see yourself as a, a ISV or you just go with that because that's kind of a nomenclature? Uh, when, when I think of the term ISV, I think of the notion of someone building an end solution for a customer to get something done. Or, um, what we're building is essentially a developer data platform. And we have thousands of ISVs who build software applications on our platform. So how could we be an ISV? Because by definition, I, you know, we enable people to do so many different things. And you know, they can be the, you know, the largest companies in the world trying to transform their business or startups who are trying to disrupt either existing industries or create new ones. And so that's, and, and that's how our customers view MongoDB and, and the whole Atlas platform basically enables them to do some amazing things. The reason for that is, you know, you know, we believe that what we are enabling developers to do is be able to reduce the friction and the work required to build modern applications through the document model, which is really intuitive to the way developers think and code through the distributed nature of platforms. So you know, things like sharding, um, no other company on the planet offers the capabilities we do to enable people to build the most highly performant and scalable applications. And also what we also do is enable people to, you know, run different types of workloads on our platform. So we have obviously transactional, we have search, we have time series. Um, we enable people to do things like sophisticated device synchronization from edge to the back end. Uh, we do graph. We do real-time analytics. So being able to consolidate all that with developers on one elegant unified platform really makes you know um, it attractive for developers to build on MongoDB. You know, you guys are a feature partner of AWS and I would speculate, I don't know if you can comment on this, but I would imagine that you probably produce a lot of revenue for Amazon because you really can't turn off EC2 when you do a database work. So, you know, you're kind of cranking all the time. Um, you guys are a top partner. How long have you guys been a partner with AWS? What's the relationship? Uh, the relationship's been strong. Um, actually, uh, Amazon spoke at one of our first user conferences in 2013. And uh, since then, we've been working together. Uh, we've been at reInvent since essentially 2015. And we've been a premier partner, um, an Emerald sponsor for the last, you know, I think, four or five years. And so um, we're very committed to the relationship. And I think there's some things that we have a lot. We have a lot of things in common. We care a lot about customers. And for us, our customers are developers. We care a lot about removing friction from their day-to-day -day work to move, be able to move fast and be able to, in order to seize new opportunities and respond to new threats. And so consequently, um, I think the partnership, obviously by nature of our, our common objectives has really come together. Talk about the journey of Mongo. I mean, you look back at the history I and mean, you go back to the old lamp stack days, right? So, you know, the day developer, um, traction is just really kind of second to none. I mean, it's really it's pretty well known. And I remember all the conversations, Dave, Mongo doesn't scale. I mean, every year we heard something along those lines because it just kept scaling. I heard the same thing with AWS back in 2013 timeframe. You know, oh, it's just, it's really not for real prime time. It's, it's for hobbyists, not so much builders, maybe startup cloud, but that developer traction is translated. Can you take us through the journey of Mongo, where it is now and, and kind of look back and, and and take us through what's the state of the art now. Right. So uh, just for those of you, who, who, those, you know, those in your audience who don't know too much about MongoDB, I'll just uh, you know, start with the background. The company was founded by developers. It was basically um, the CTO and some key developers from DoubleClick who really saw the challenges and the limitations of the relational database architecture because they're trying to serve billions of ads per day and they constantly need to work around the constraints of the relational database. And so they essentially decided why don't we just build a database that we'd want to use? And that was the catalyst to start uh, MongoDB. The first thing they focused on was rather than having a tabular data structure, they focused on a document data structure. Why documents? 
because it's much more natural and intuitive to work with data and documents in terms of you can set parent-child relationships and how you just think about the relationship with data is much more natural in a document than trying to connect data in a you know in hundreds of different tables. And so that enabled developers to just move so much faster. The second thing they focused on was building a truly distributed architecture, not kind of some adjunct, you know, uh, you know, architecture that maybe made the existing architecture a little bit more scalable. They really took from the ground up a, a truly distributed architecture. So where you can do native replication, you can do sharding, and you can do it on a global basis. And so that was the the other profound. Um, um, you know, thing that they did. And then since then, what we've also done is, you know, the document model is truly a superset of other models. So we enabled other capabilities like search. You can do join, so you can do very transaction intensive um, use case of MongoDB. We're fully asset compliant. So you have the highest forms of data guarantees. You can do very sophisticated things like time series. You can do device synchronization. You can do real time analytics because we can carve off read only nodes to be able to read and query data in real time rather than have to offload that data into a data warehouse. Um, and so that enables developers to just build a wide variety of, of uh, application MongoDB and they get one unified developer interface. It's highly elegant and seamless. And so essentially the cost and tax of managing multiple point tools goes away. Uh, when, when I think of the term ISV, I think of the notion of someone building an end solution for a customer to get something done. Or, um, what we're building is essentially a developer data platform, and we have thousands of ISVs who build software applications on our platform. So how could we be an ISV? Because by definition, I, you know, we enable people to do so many different things, and you know, they can be the, you know, the largest companies in the world trying to transform their business, or startups who are trying to disrupt either existing industries or create new ones. And so that's and and that's how our customers view. MongoDB and, and the whole Atlas platform basically enables them to do some amazing things. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of activity on the Atlas. Do you see yourself as an ISV or you just go with that because that's kind of a nomenclature? No, we don't view ourselves as ISV at all. We view ourselves as a developer data platform. And the reason for that is, you know, you know we believe that what we are enabling developers to do is be able to reduce the friction and the work required to build modern applications through the document model, which is really intuitive to the way developers think and code through the distributed nature of platforms. So, you know, things like sharding, um, no other company on the planet offers the capabilities we do to enable people to build the most highly performant and scalable applications. And also what we also do is enable people to, you know, run different types of workflows on platforms. So we have obviously transactional, we have search, we have time series. Um, we enable people to do things like sophisticated device synchronization from edge to the back end. Uh, we do graph. We do real time analytics. So being able to consolidate all that with developers on one elegant unified platform really makes you know um, it attractive for developers to build on MongoDB. You know the cloud adoption really is putting a lot of pressure on these systems, and we're seeing companies in the ecosystem and AWS stepping up. You guys are doing a great job. But we're seeing a lot more acceleration around IT on staying on premise for certain use cases, yet you got the cloud as well growing for workloads and, and you get this hybrid steady state as an operational mode. I call that kind of the classic cloud adoption uh, uh, track record. You guys are an example of uh, uh, multiple iterations in cloud. You're doing a lot more. We're starting to see this tipping point with others and customers coming kind of on that same pattern, building platforms on top of AWS, on top of the primitives, more horsepower, higher level services, industry specific capabilities with data. I mean, this is a new kind of cloud, kind of a next generation, you know, uh, AWS next gen, you got the classic high performance infrastructure, it's getting better and better. But now you've got this new application platform you know, reminds me of the old ASP days, you know, um, if you will. I mean, so are you seeing customers doing things differently? Can you share your, your reaction to you know, this role of, you know, this new kind of SaaS platform 
that just isn't an application. It's, it's more, it's deeper than that. What's going on here? We call it super cloud, but like- what, Yeah, what so you essentially what, what, you know, a lot of our customers are doing, and by the way, we have over 37,000 customers of all shapes and sizes from the largest companies in the world to cutting edge startups who are building applications in MongoDB. Why do they choose MongoDB? Because essentially it's the, you know, the fastest way to innovate. And the reason it's the fastest way to innovate is because they can work with data so much easier than working with data on other types of architecture. So the document model is profoundly a breakthrough way to work with data and make it very, very easy. So customers are essentially building these modern applications, you know, applications built on microservices, event-driven architectures, you know, addressing sophisticated use cases like time series to, and then ultimately now they're getting into machine learning. We have a bunch of companies building machine learning applications on top of MongoDB. And the reason they're doing that is because one, they get the benefits of being able to, you know, build and work with, with data so much easier than any other platform. And it's highly scalable and performant in a way that no other platform is. So literally they can run their, you know, workloads both locally on one, you know, autonomous zone, or they can basically be, or available zone, or they could be basically, you know, anywhere in the world. And we also offer multi-cloud capabilities, which I can get into later. Let's talk about the performance side. I know um, I was speaking with some Amazon folks every year. It's the same story. They're really working on the physics. They're getting the chips. They want to squeeze as much energy out of that. I've never met a developer that said they want to run their workload on a slower platform or slower hardware. We know, said no developer, right? No one wants to do that. Correct. So you guys have a lot of experience tuning in with Graviton instances. We're seeing a lot more AWS EC2 instances. Um, we're seeing a lot more kind of integrated end-to-end -end stories. Data is now security. It's tied into data uh, stacks or data modern kind of data hybrid stack. A lot going on around the hardware performance, specialization, the role of data, kind of a modern data stack emerging. What, what's your thoughts on the, that, that? Yeah, I, I think if you had asked me, you know, when the cloud started going vogue, like, you know, the, you know, the, the later part of the last decade and told me, you know, sitting here 12, 15 years later, would, you know, would we be talking about, you know, chip processing speeds? I would probably thought, nah, we would have moved on by then. But what's really clear is that customers, to your point, customers care about performance. They care about price performance, right? So, AWS's investments in Graviton, we have actually deployed a significant portion of our Atlas fleet on Amazon now runs on Graviton. You know, they built other chipsets like Trainium and, and Inferentia for like, you know, training models and running inferences. They're doing things like Nitro. And so what that really speaks to is that the cloud providers are focusing on the price performance of their as you call it, the primitives and their infrastructure and the infrastructure layer that are still very, very important. And, and you know, um, if you look at their revenue, um, about 60 to 70% of the revenue comes from that pure infrastructure. To, so to your point, they can't offer a second class solution and still win. So given that now they're seeing a lot of competition from Azure, Azure's building their own chipsets, Google's already, already obviously do, doing that and, and building specialized chipsets for machine learning. You're seeing these cloud providers compete. So they have to really compete to make their platform the most performant, the most price competitive in the marketplace, which gives us a great platform to build on to enable developers to build these incredibly highly performant applications that customers are now demanding. I think that's a really great point. I mean, you know, it's so funny, Dave, because you know, I remember those, we don't talk speeds and feeds anymore. We're not talking about boxes. I mean, that's old kind of school thinking because it was a data center mentality, speeds and feeds, and that was super important. But we're kind of coming back to that in the cloud and now in distributed architecture, as you put your platforms out there for developers, you have to run fast. You gotta, you can't give the developer subpar or any kind of performance that's, they'll, they'll go somewhere else. I mean, that's the reality of what developers, no one, again, no one says I want to go on the slower platform, unless it's some sort of policy based on price or some sort of thing. But but for the most part, it's got to run fast. So you got the tail of two clouds going on here. you got Amazon Classic, IaaS, keep making it faster, under the hood. And then you got the new abstraction layers and the higher level services. That's where you guys are bridging this new, new generational shift where it's like, hey, you know what? I can go, I can run a headless application. I can run a SaaS app that's refactored with data. So you see a lot more innovation with developers, you know, running stuff 
in, in the CICD pipeline that was once IT. And you're seeing security and data operations kind of emerging as a structural change of how companies are, are, are transforming on the business side. What's your reaction to that business transformation and the role of the developer? Right. So, I mean, um, I have to obviously um, give amazing kudos to the, you know, to AWS and the Amazon team for what they built. Um, obviously, they're the ones who kind of created the cloud industry and they continue to push the innovation uh, in the space. I mean, today they have over 300 services um, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, no startup today is building anything not on the cloud because they have so many building blocks to start with. But what we, though, have found from our, talking to our customers is that in some ways there is still, you know, the onus is on the customer to figure out which building block to use to be, be able to stitch together the applications and solutions they want to build. And what we have done is taken essentially an opinionated point of view and said, we will enable you to do that, you know, using one data model. You know, Amazon today offers, I think, 17 or 18 different types of databases. We don't think like, you know, having a tool for every job makes sense because over time, the tax and cost of learning, managing and supporting those different applications just don't make a lot of sense or just become cost prohibitive. And so we think offering one data model, one, you know, elegant user experience, you know, one way to address the broadest set of, of use cases is uh, that we think is a better way, but clearly customers have choice. They can use Amazon's primitives uh, and those second layer services, as you as you described, or they can use us. And fortunately, we've seen a lot of customers come to us with our approach. And so does Amazon. And I have to give, obviously, again, kudos. And Amazon is very customer obsessed. And so we have a great relationship with them, both technically in terms of the product integrations we do, as well as working with them in the field, you know, on joint customer opportunities. Uh, speaking of, while you mentioned that, I want to just uh, ask you, how is that marketplace relationship going with AWS? Some of the partners are really seeing great uh, economic and cross-selling, joint selling, or them selling <laughs> uh, your, your stuff. So there's a real revenue pop there really in that religion. Can you comment on that? Your yeah, so we had been working in the part partner uh, in the marketplace for many years now, more from a field point of view where customers could leverage their existing commitments to AWS and leverage uh, essentially um, you know, um, using Atlas and applying in you know, Atlas towards their commits. There was also some sales incentives for people in the field to basically work together so that, you know, everyone won should we collectively win a customer. Um, what we recently announced is this pay-as-you-go initiative where literally a customer on the Amazon marketplace can basically turn up, you know, uh, an Atlas instance with no commitment. So it's so easy. So we're just pushing the envelope to just reduce the friction for people to use uh, Atlas on AWS, and it's working really, really well. The uptake has been very strong, and, and we feel like we're just getting started because uh, we're so excited about the results we're seeing. You know, one of the things that's kind of not core in the keynote theme, but I think its underlying message is clear in the industry is the developer productivity. You said making things easy is a big deal. Self-service, getting in and trying, these are what developer-friendly tools are like and platforms. So I have to ask you, because this comes up a lot in our kind of business conversation is, is if you take digital transformation concept to its completion, assuming now, you know, as a thought exercise, you completely transform a company with technology. That's, that is the business transformation outcome. Take it to completion. What does that look like? I mean, if you go there, you'd say, okay, the company is the app. The company right. is the data. It's not a department serving the business. It's the business. And so I think this is kind of what we're seeing as the next big mountain to climb, which is companies that do transform there. They are technology companies. They're not a department like IT. So I think yeah. a lot of companies are kind of saying, wait a minute, why would we have a department? It should be the company. What's your your, your view on this? Because this yeah, is- Yeah, so I, I've had the for good fortune of being able to talk to thousands of customers all over the world. And you know, one thing, John, they never tell me, they never tell me that they're innovating too quickly. In fact, they always tell me the reverse. They tell me all the obstacles and impediments they have to be able to be able to, to be able to move fast. So one of the reasons they gravitate to MongoDB is just the speed that they wish they can build applications to, to your point, developer productivity. And by definition, developer productivity is a proxy for innovation. 
the faster you can make your developers you know, move, the faster they can push out code, the faster they can iterate and build new solutions or add more capabilities on the existing applications, the faster you can innovate, either to, again, seize new opportunities or to respond to new threats in your business. And so that resonates with every C-level executive. And to your point, the developer is not some side hustle that they kind of think about once in a while, it's core to the business. So developers have amassed enormous amount of power and influence. You know, their, their, their engineering teams are front and center in terms of how they think about building capabilities and, and building their business. And that's also obviously enabled, you know, uh, to your point, every software company, every company is now becoming a software company because it all starts with software. Software enables, defines, or creates almost every company's value proposition. You know, it makes me smile because I love uh, operating systems. It's one of my hobbies in college was, uh, you know, systems programming. And I remember those. Now we're kind of like the operating systems, the cloud. So, you know, everything's got specialized capabilities. And that's a big theme here at reInvent. If you look at the announcements Monday night with Peter DeSantis, you got, you got new, new instances, new chips. So this whole engine kind of specialized components is like an engine. You got a core and you got other subsystems. This is going to be an integral part of how companies architect their platform or, you know, Adam calls it the landing zone or whatever they want to call it. But they, you got to start seeing a new architectural thinking for companies. What's your, uh, can you share your experience on how companies should look at this opportunity as a plethora of more goodness on the hardware, I'm hardware, but like chips and instances, because now you can mix and match. You've got it. You've got, uh, you got everything you need to kind of not roll your own, but like really build foundational high performance capabilities. Yeah. So I, I, so I think this is where I think Amazon is really enabling all companies, including, you know, companies like MongoDB, you know, push the envelope and in innovation. So for example, you know, the, the next big hurdle for us, I think we've seen two big platform shifts over the last 15 years of platform shifts, you know, to mobile and the platform shift to cloud. I believe the next big platform shift is going from dumb apps to smart apps, which you're building in, you know, uh, machine learning, and you know AI and just very sophisticated automation. And when you start automating human decision making, rather than you know looking at a dashboard and saying, okay, I see the data now, and now I have to do this, you can automate that into your applications and make your applications leveraging real time data become that much more smart. And that ultimately then becomes a developer challenge. And so we feel really good about our position in taking advantage of those next big trends in software, leveraging the price performance curves that you know, Amazon continues to push in terms of their hardware performance, yeah. networking performance, you know, you know, price performance and storage to build those next generation of modern applications. Okay, so let me get this straight. You have next generation intelligent smart apps uh, and you have AI generative solutions coming out around the corner. This is like pretty good position for Mongo to be in with data. I mean, this is what you do. You're in that center exactly. of the action. Um, yes. What's it like? I mean, you must be like trying to shake the world and wake up. The world's starting to wake up now to this. So what's what's it like? Well, I mean, we're really excited and bullish about the future. Um, we think that we're well positioned because we know, as to your point, you know, we have amassed amazing amount of developer mindshare. We are the most popular modern data platform out there in the world. Um, there's developers in almost every corner of the planet using us to do something. And to your point, leveraging data and these advances in machine learning and AI, and we think the more AI becomes democratized, not you know done by a bunch of data scientists sitting in some corner office, um, but essentially enabling developers to have the tools to build these very, very sophisticated, smart applications it will, you know, will position us well. So that's, a, you know, obviously going to be a focus for us over the, frankly, I think this is going to be like a 10 year, 10, 15 year run. And we're just getting started in this whole area. I think you guys are re really well positioned. I think that's a great point. And, if you, and Adam mentioned to me in my interview, he said on stage, talk about it. The, the role of a data analyst kind of goes away. Everyone's a data analyst. Right. You'll still see specialization on, on core data engineering, uh, which is kind of like an SRE role for data. So data ops and data as code is a big deal, uh, making data applications. So again, exciting times, um, and you guys are well positioned. If you had to bumper sticker the event uh, this week here at reInvent, what would you, uh, how would you categorize this, this point in time. I mean, Adam's a great leader. He's going to help educate customers 
how to use technology to for business advantage and transformation. You know, Andy did a great job of making technology great and innovative and setting the table. Adam's got to bring it to the enterprises and businesses. So it's going to be an interesting point in time we're in now. What, how would you categorize this year's reInvent? Right. I think the, the the tech world is pivoting towards what I'd call rationalization or cost optimization. I think people obviously in you know the last 10 years have, you know, it's all about speed, speed, speed. And I think people still value speed, but they want to do it at some sort of predictable cost model. And I think you're going to see a lot more focus around cost and cost optimization. That's where we think having one platform is by definition of vendor consolidation and way for people to cut costs so that they can basically, you know, still move fast, but don't have to incur the tax of using a whole bunch of different you know, point tools. And so we think we're well positioned. So the bumper sticker I think about is essentially, you know, do more for less with MongoDB. Yeah. And the developers on the front lines, great stuff. You guys are a great partner, a top partner at AWS um, and great reflection on, on where you guys been, but really where you are now and great opportunity. David did share. Thank you so much for spending the time. And it's been great following Mongo and the continued rise of, of developers of the, on the front lines, really driving the business and that, and they are kind of driving the business. So, and I think they're going to continue smart apps, intelligent apps, AI generative apps are coming. I mean, this is real. Thanks, John. It's great speaking with you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Okay. Take care.